Welcome, class, to the lecture of the Vietnam War and its impact on the United States of America. Keep in mind as we go through this lecture to evaluate the impact of the war, you need to be uh, conscious of the United States pulling out in 1973, why that took place, the fallout from that, the cost of the war, both uh, physically and financially, and then the legislative changes that took effect uh, through the War Powers Act also the 26th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution on voting. And finally, the immigration patterns, so specifically among immigrants to America. Vietnam uh, ends for U.S. involvement, for the most part, in terms of combat troops in 1973. The president, the American president at the time is uh, Gerald Ford, and he took over for Rich Richard Nixon um, after the Watergate scandal. And um, one, one thing that we'll study and look at is when President Richard Nixon is the only president to resign, um, to quit while in office. Um, Gerald Ford uh, realized that an, an end to this war needed to take place. Um, but at first he thought that America could withdraw its troops but still send the South Vietnamese uh, government uh, money and, uh, and weaponry. And uh, Congress quickly refused uh, that request. By 1975, the North Vietnamese communists will overtake most major cities in the South, including Saigon, the capital of the South Vietnamese and its headquarters, and unify, on, unify Vietnam under one country, not North and South, but Vietnam, communist Vietnam. These are some pictures. This first picture is uh, when the United States made the decision to uh, pull out combat troops. Many South Vietnamese civilians stormed the embassy in Saigon where uh, U.S. diplomats resided um, to protest the action of, of being left on their own um, as America had promised its aid um, back from the 1950s to support uh, the struggle of the South against the Communist North. This is a picture in uh, 1975 of diplomats uh, leaving the uh, U.S. Embassy in Saigon via helicopter as the uh, North Vietnamese Communists were surrounding the compound. This picture uh, was a common picture uh, throughout the year 1975 and beyond as many uh, refugees sought a new place to live um, as they were supporters of the South Vietnamese government or the American military through the secret war. Um, they were hunted by the communists of the north um, to or put in prison or put in educate re-education camps as they called them. 58,000 Americans lost their lives in this war. Uh, maybe closer to 2 million Vietnamese. Again, the war was devastating to, uh, to both populations, especially the Vietnamese, as uh, much of their uh, geography, their land, was drastically disrupted um, from the ongoing bombing campaigns. Um, over nine times the amount of bombs were dropped on Vietnam by the U.S. military that, that were uh, dropped on the whole Pacific theater in World War II. Over, over 300,000 Americans were injured in this war. Um, various different types of injuries. But one of the ones I want to highlight is the uh, is post-traumatic stress disorder um, that you've heard of today through veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. At one point uh, in the 1970s there was about 400,000 people that had registered as having this disorder and uh, being too unfit to work and being labeled per permanently disabled as a result from what they saw, what they experienced, or what they felt from the war. The cost of the war was staggering at $178 billion approximately, and part of that was because the presidents during the time and Congress during the time could not raise taxes to pay for the war, in part due to its unpopularity. As a result, by the time that Gerald Ford is president, uh, inflation is at an all-time high. Inflation is where the value of the dollar uh, decreases. Three important legacies from Vietnam uh, are still in effect today. One is Vietnam syndrome. Anytime the American president or Congress sends troops somewhere um, in hostile fighting, the idea is how long will they remain there? At what point do we bring them home? We're seeing that now with the war in Afghanistan. At what point um, are or will our U.S. soldiers come home? And is this going to turn into another Vietnam in terms of not meeting up? 
all of our objectives and, and uh, at what point through the cost and the death and the injury to our soldiers. The War Powers Act is the uh, second major uh, impact legislatively and that, uh, that was a new law after Vietnam uh, that the president can must uh, can can deploy forces, uh, but must inform Congress in 90 days, and Congress has the right to deny approval and bring those troops home. Uh, in most cases, though, however, Congress will uh, accept and approve the action. And that's this War Powers Act has essentially been used ever since the Vietnam War, um, for the first Gulf War, for the. Uh, in the 1990s for the most recent war in Iraq in uh, 2003 and then the war in Afghanistan which continues it began in 2001. 26th amendment to the Constitution um, it was brought forth and I guess the anti-war movement can take credit to this uh, as they protested the draft heavily that you could be drafted um, at age 18 but you could not vote until the age of 21 and so this was this was changed in the 1970s as the uh, amendment was the Constitution was amended 26 times this is 26th amendment being uh, for voting finally the immigration patterns and this begins with the uh, secret war um, which was a uh, war that uh, was labeled uh, the secret war actually in, in the 1997 and the United States denied that this uh, war took place until that time. The objective was uh, to recruit uh, mostly Hmong from the country of, of Laos uh, to infiltrate this Ho Chi Minh Trail and remember the Ho Chi Minh Trail um, was used by North Vietnam to supply the Viet Cong fighters, the guerrilla fighters throughout the South to attack South Vietnamese strong posts as well as uh, American troops. And this really, the Viet Cong really became the number one enemy um, of American and South Vietnam. And a major reason why uh, the Americans lost and did not meet their objectives in this war. 40,000 Hmong died in the secret war. Um, and it took until again the 1990s to put a plaque like this in the uh, Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. General Vang Pa was the leader of the Hmong people, and if you have an opportunity, read about him. He did, uh, after the war, did seek refuge in the United States um, and was, uh, was considered a controversial figure. Um, for, for various reasons, but if you read about him, you'll soon learn that he was very much a, a heroic person uh, for the Hmong people, for those resistors of, uh, of the, the communist government of Laos. Finally, uh, immigration patterns to America were affected starting in the 1970s, continuing through today, um, and, and many uh, from the ethnic group of the Hmong people uh, that resided in Laos, and Cambodia, Thailand. And uh, many, many immigrants to Minnesota. Minnesota has opened up its borders more than many other states uh, to the Hmong people. And uh, chances are your neighbors, your friends, um, their, their parents and grandparents have stories of seeking refuge, uh, refugee status from um, the communist in Laos or in Vietnam uh, because of their involvement and support uh, with the secret war. Those stories are still very real, still very near too many of our Hmong immigrants in Minnesota. That concludes this lecture on the impact of the Vietnam War. Just remember this is very much a summary. Uh, there's entire books written on this, entire documentaries devoted to this. But this is an important period in American history. Please read pages 792 to 793 and take extra note on the subpoints listed.